The second view um, sees the two systems as mutually reinforcing, so suggesting that the norm which better protects the individual is the one to be applied in a given situation. Um, in general terms, as we've seen, human rights law articulates more general rules uh, and is broader in its scope of application. So to that extent, it can benefit uh, from the greater precision often found in rules of humanitarian law. We'll look at some examples of this in a minute. But having said that, human rights law is, is perhaps a more dynamic body of law, uh, subject to more casework and jurisprudence. And to that extent, it can provide a useful tool to the greater understanding of humanitarian law. So let's look at, look at a few examples, three, briefly. Firstly, the right to a fair trial. This is enshrined in Article 14 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, as well as in Article 75 of Additional Protocol 1 to the, the Geneva Conventions. Um, so the interpretation of the latter, uh, the provision under humanitarian law, can draw on human rights law, which is more detailed in its description of this right, while its status in the Geneva Pro in the additional protocol under international humanitarian law means that it provides a certain minimum threshold below which no derogation is possible. So one informs the other, human rights law informs humanitarian law, uh, and the non-derogability -derog of humanitarian law ensures that that right has to apply in all situations. Um, <coughs> Or, secondly, we can look at the question of torture, absolutely prohibited under both bodies of law. However, the only definition of torture is that which is found in Article 1 of the Convention Against Torture, um, which uh, requires torture to be, loosely speaking, perpetrated by, for it to be torture, it has to be perpetrated by or ordered by or in compliance with uh, or with the connivance of a public uh, official, state official, whereas under international humanitarian law, it can also, of course, be perpetrated by armed opposition groups who are not um, uh, uh, public officials at all. So torture needs to be re-understood. The human rights understanding of torture needs to be recalibrated for it to have relevance and application in the, in the context of the, the humanitarian law. Or finally, to take an economic social issue, um, you could look at the duties regarding health care, which are contained in Article 55 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Um, these need to be applied in light of the right to health as defined and articulated in the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and the commentaries on that, if it is to have its fullest possible meaning. So these are the types of ways in which the bodies of law can, can assist each other. Um, uh, a few years ago, the UN came out with a report on the relationship between human rights law and, and, and humanitarian law. And it flagged some potential areas of tension. We've looked at areas of complementarity. We've looked at a few areas of tension between these two bodies of law. And I'll just list a few. One is the prohibition of arbitrary killings. Uh, in human, human rights law and, and its protection of the right to life and how to square that with international humanitarian law which we've already uh, touched on. Or to, to give you a more specific example, can, can targeted, can individuals be targeted? Can you have targeted killings under, uh, under these bodies of law? The prohibition of, of torture, which is, we just mentioned, um, uh, there are some who question the extent to which certain methods of warfare uh, may give rise to inhuman treatment under human rights law. Um, detention and the extent to which uh, the due process requirements of human rights law uh, uh, can be applicable or should increasingly be seen to be applicable in situations of detention under international humanitarian law and the right to a remedy also touched on. Can this be seen to apply now in situations of, 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 of conflict? Just going back to the, the right to life uh, issue, um, 
we've seen that humanitarian law accepts the reality and use of le lethal force and even goes further, accepting the incidental killing and wounding of civilians uh, not participating in hostilities, and that human rights law is, is far more restrictive, permitting lethal force only if there is no other means of averting uh, a serious and imminent danger of serious violence. Uh, so under human rights law, to give you a very concrete illustration, the planning of an operation with the purpose of killing can never be lawful. Whereas you wouldn't have armies if that was the case under international humanitarian law. Both legal codes are subject to the parameters of proportionality. Okay? But they, they understand this concept differently. Human rights law requires that the use of force be proportional to the aim to protect life. Whereas humanitarian law requires that the incidental loss of civilian life or injury caused by an armed attack must not be excessive uh, in relation to the concrete and direct military advantage anticipated. Um, in its advisory opinion on nuclear weapons, the ICJ looked at this question on the right to life and observed, and I'll quote again, in principle, the right not arbitrarily to be deprived of one's life applies also in hostilities. So the test of what is an arbitrary deprivation of life then falls to be determined by the applicable lex specialis, namely the law applicable in armed conflict and which is designed to regulate the conduct of hostilities. So thus whether a particular loss of life through the use of a certain weapon in warfare is to be considered an arbitrary deprivation of life contrary to the international covenant, this can only be decided by reference to the law applicable in armed conflict and not deduced from the terms of the covenant itself. So, whether or not one law or another applies in a given situation can lead to markedly different outcomes. So it's vitally important to know which legal code does apply. And this is a question essentially of fact, not, not law, even if the determination is not always uh, straightforward. <coughs> 